Good governance and effective service delivery. Federal government concludes plans to send bills to the National Assembly. Take the lead to sanitize the public service, a charge from President Muhammad Buhari to the judiciary. National Assembly members process on Christmas holiday, just as the federal government declares public holiday to mark Yuletide. Plus, an update on fuel situation in the country. Hello, thanks for joining us here on NTA Network News tonight. I'm Joseph Johnson and joining me tonight from Lagos is Jennifer Igwe. Investment in the healthcare sector is to be enhanced in a deliberate attempt to hold the loss of well-trained professionals to other lands. President Muhammad Buhari made the promise while receiving the executive members of the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. President Muhammad Buhari described as worrisome and counterproductive the frequent manner in which Nigerian professionals, especially in the medical field, leave the country for greener pastures. The federal government, he said, will not allow such brain drain to continue, hence the resolve to standardize operations in the nation's healthcare institutions for effective service delivery through enhanced budgetary provision. The president appreciated the concern expressed by the association on the state of the health sector and promised that his administration will do its best to work on its recommendations. The president of the Medical and Dental Consultants Association of Nigeria, Professor Ngim, Ngim had earlier told President Buhari that the association is willing to partner with his administration in the implementation of policies that will impact positively on the health of the Nigerian people. He made a case for better health financing, reconstitution of the governing board of Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, establishment of medical universities in each of the geopolitical zones of the country, as well as pegging the tenure of chief medical directors and medical directors of tertiary hospitals to a single term of five years. Professor Ngim also called for action on the resolution of interprofessional rivalry in the healthcare sector of the country by releasing the white paper on Yayale Ahmed panel report. The federal government in renewed bid to enhance service delivery in Algeria is to send a number of bills to the National Assembly. Details of the bills were concluded at the resumed meeting of the Federal Executive Council presided over by President Muhammad Buhari, State House correspondent Jide Unifade has details. The Federal Ministry of Environment presented two memos, one of which the cleaning up project in Oguni Land, taken at the Council's meeting on Wednesday. The second memo taken at this meeting is seeking Council's approval for the revision of the National Biosafety Management Agency Act. Because it's been around for more than a, a decade, we felt it is necessary to review it and bring it up to date and face the present reality so that as technology is developing rapidly, the policy framework that should be put in place to regulate and monitor effectively to ensure that our citizens are safe. The Federal Ministry of Justice presented two memos as well. The first is related to copyright bill, which Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami says is to protect the creative industry from pirates. The second bill presented by the ministry was on the protection of maritime operations. The intention is to accord protection to the maritime industry against pirates and indeed come up with a comprehensive policy position accommodated into the bill, which is intended to ensure at the end of the day that the international conventions that has been ratified by Nigeria over time was equally accommodated. The spirit of the international members meet from time to time to improve regulations on veterinary practice so that um, people not qualified to practice as vet doctors do not operate in the country. The regulations were made and submitted to council, and council approved them for Mr. President to endorse. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says work is ongoing round the clock to ensure that the queues at petrol filling stations do not linger for too long. 
Ministry of uh, Petroleum Resources and the Department of uh, Petroleum Resources have working around the clock to ensure that this thing becomes you know, a thing of the past. President Muhammad Dubwari, who presided over the meeting, signed a condolence register in honor of late Alex Ekweme, former Vice President of Nigeria. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari has challenged the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, to use the privilege of being regarded as opinion builders to enlighten the citizenry towards supporting the government in improving the standard of public accountability and judicial integrity. The president, who granted audience to the National Executive Committee of the Association, believes that the collapse of public confidence in the justice system in particular will have disastrous effects on democracy. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. The executive members of the Nigerian Bar Association were in the State House to not only express appreciation to President Muhammad Buhari for the giant strides recorded so far in securing the country, fighting corruption and impunity, as well as improving the economy, but also give their inputs on the wondrous task of ensuring a better Nigeria for the good of all. A strong modern legal profession is key, in our view, to building the country's legal system. President Muhammad Buhari acknowledged that since establishment, the Nigerian Bar Association proved to be a fearless and tireless voice in defense of the rights of the citizenry and for the enthronement of due process in public administration. This, he said, informed the involvement of the legal profession in the key programs of the present administration, especially the vigorous efforts at pursuing the anti-corruption campaign. The NBA will be the first to acknowledge that lawyers have been extremely busy since this administration came into office <laughs> due to our active use of the court system to pursue the restoration of public accountability, values, and recovery of looted assets. I believe that you are supporting the current initiatives of the government to sanitize the public service generally the president expressed the conviction that corruption and impunity can only flourish when due process mechanisms are disregarded, promising that the federal government agencies will continue to operate on a foundation of the rule of law. We, however, expect a corresponding duty on the part of all professional bodies, such as the NBA, to ensure the highest forms of discipline among their members and to ensure that all cases of indiscipline and corruption are tackled expeditiously. President Buhari described as worrisome the allegations of attempts by some senior lawyers to corrupt judges and the judicial system. He therefore solicited the support of the Nigerian Bar Association in developing a more efficient justice system for Nigeria. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The federal government has declared Monday 25th and Tuesday 26th December 2017 as well as Monday 1st uh, Christmas as Christmas and New Year. The Minister of Interior Abdurrahman Dambazao in a statement enjoined Christians and all Nigerians to use their period to pray for Nigeria's development while strengthening their resolve to maintain peace and unity. He called for the support of Nigerians for the Buhari administration. The holidays are here again, always an exciting moment. Now, in the meantime, NTA News is monitoring an unexpected turn of event at some petrol depots in the country, which perhaps underlined the reason for the continued scarcity. Namdi Odipo tells us more. This is what Nigerians have come to know about fuel supply across the country in the last week and a half. But then, how soon can these all end? All we are saved. This video shot by an amateur now gives some insight into why the scarcity may have lingered for these long. It shows a group of protesting workers from a few depot in Lagos, and the grouse is not with their employer, but with the tanker drivers' union. And all these trucks are loaded to take to various places in this country. But here the PTD imposed a treasures um, bill of over 21,500 on each truck. 
a truck that belongs to the company. On the streets and in the queues, most motorists are oblivious of some intrinsic factors impeding the supply of petroleum products to the fuel stations. What most want is a return to the days of you just driving, you buy, and off you go. In Abuja, Namdi Odigo, NTA News. No doubt, uh, availability and affordability of uh, petrol across the country review is always topical this Yuletide. So joining us uh, to talk more about uh, the role of the National Association of Road Transport Owners towards reassuring adequate product supply is Malam Atiku Ahmed, the General Manager, Administration of NATO. Thank you for joining us on NTA Network News. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. Now, it's typical, isn't it, that issues of uh, affordability and uh, uh, availability of uh, petrol always come up during this period. So, what is your association doing to ensure that the suffering of Nigerians is reduced? Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, actually, it is a very sad development that uh, we find ourselves in this situation. We were basking in the area of spending over a year of uh, fuel scarcity free environments. All of a sudden, this thing just uh, reared up its head. And uh, uh, it is worrisome to all the uh, parties concerned in the oil and gas industry or in the downstream sector of the petroleum industry in particular. Uh, actually, my association, like you've rightly observed, is a critical stakeholder you know, in the supply and distribution of petroleum products in this country. And so we are so concerned. But our main task in this is to ensure, like you have said, availability by taking the products from where they are produced, from where they are, to actually where they are needed. That is basically our role. And except if the product is there, we cannot perform this task. So as I'm talking to you now, our drivers, our tankers have been deployed to all the various loading locations across the country. But if the product is not there, for example, what can you do? So we are limited as far as that one is concerned. Uh, so, uh, but uh, one thing I can assure you is that our leadership has been consulting almost on a daily basis with other stakeholders. Yes, I was just about to come to that. If, uh, you know, your role as uh, the is central to availability of petrol in the country. So are you also, uh, you know, uh, relating with other stakeholders like the NNPC, uh, you know, to ensure that uh, these issues of uh, scarcity is, uh, you know, dealt with? Yeah, very much so. Uh, we've been consulting with various stakeholders, not only NNPC. But for the NNPC, even yesterday, our leadership and the leadership of the Petroleum Tanker Drivers Association branch of Mepeng, we paid a courtesy call on the group managing director of NNPC, uh, Dr. Mekanti Kachalabaru, yesterday. And uh, we've had useful discussions with him We've shared so much, uh, you know, uh, information as far as the issue of the crisis is concerned. And uh, we've, you know, expressed our determination to assist in any manner possible, you understand, to make sure that this situation is brought under control. And uh, he has also mentioned some of the challenges that he's facing, which we actually agreed with, you know. And uh, uh, we are putting our heads together. We are still going to have another meeting uh, as a result of the one that we held yesterday you know, to still continue to see whether this issue can be resolved permanently so that in the next uh, uh, year we cannot have this kind of problem. Again. Yes, yes, exactly, because we are all affected by this situation. Because just recently, you know, getting to the petrol station to get a fuel, I, I, couldn't have, I couldn't wait for long because of the long queues and all. So what assurance are you giving to Nigerians that this issue you know, that is always reoccurring during this period will no longer be the Yeah, the scene. assurance I'll give you is the assurance that the GMT gave us too. For example, uh, one thing we discovered yesterday is that one of the contributing factors to the present crisis is the panic buying by the members of the public. I, I don't know where this information used to come, but people just, you know, out of panic, they begin to queue up in filling station thinking that there will be scarcity. The GMD told us that they have products in Wari, they have in Port Harcourt, they have in Lagos, and they have in Calabar. You understand? Yeah. But I, I just don't understand why we are still grappling with this particular problem like well, this. Well, uh, well uh, uh, let's just leave it there. But you just hope that uh, the situation will be reversed because at, the, uh, at some point when you, you're told that there's availability, there's no need for panic buying. But when you see the situation on ground, 
it's a different story, but let's leave it there this time uh, and hope that the situation will uh, change. Thank you, Malam Atiku Ahmed, the General Manager, Administration of NATO. It was nice speaking You're with welcome. you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, let's move on now to some of the other stories making the news at this time. The Federal Road Safety Corps will soon make public the report of the Technical Working Group on the Nigeria Road Safety Strategy, NRSS. Court Marshal of the FRAC Boboyo Yeyemi says at a meeting in the Ministry of National Planning in Abuja that the document will facilitate the attainment of United Nations Decade Action for Road Safety. Yeyemi Ajay reports. Approved by the Federal Executive Council in 2016, the Nigeria Road Safety Strategy is a platform for an integrated national approach towards reducing carnage on the nation's highways. Among other objectives, it is targeting a 35% reduction in road accident fatalities by 2018. This is in line with the United Nations Decade of Action for Road Safety for 2011 to 2020. FRC Commercial said the group's responsibility is to produce a technical report for the National Road Safety Advisory Council, led by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Ochimbajo. The technical group, he says, has brought all the relevant groups at the federal and state levels together. One of the things is the critical use of state assessments. It needs for the states to really make sure that their budgetary provisions is fully implemented on the road safety infrastructure and road infrastructure. Those are the critical things we are looking at. Other responses at the meeting acknowledge the clear definition of the nation's roads, setting Nigeria on course for a coordinated road traffic management. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTN News. Well, do stay with us here on NTN Network News. Ahead on the news, thank you for giving us a voice. Persons with disability tell President Muhammad Buhari. Ho, ho, ho. This year, I'm on holiday. You know why? Because GLOW is giving out a massive 200,000 naira to everyone. 200,000, 200,000, 200,000 naira for everyone, everyone. Get free 200,000 naira preloaded on the new Jumbo Sale. Existing customers dial star 224 hash to enjoy. Now every sale is a Jumbo Sale. And every 100 naira recharge is also a chance to win fantastic prizes in the everyday bonanza. There's no better gift. <laughs> the largest data network. Glow Unlimited. His humility, trustworthiness, patriotism, and love for the common man earn him respect of ordinary Nigerians. Muhammad Buhari, the people's president, an example of uprightness, doggedness, and a believer of true and progressive Nigeria. Three years down the line, Nigerians have seen commitment and performance in fulfillment of campaign promises. Peace is gradually returning to the ravaged Northeast and the entire nation is ripping from it. The economy is being revitalized with special attention to agriculture and all the natural resources being fully explored to the fullest. The country is winning its war against corruption with looted funds being recovered to government coffers. Nigerians are saying, thank you, Baba. Carry on demand of the people. This message is from Thank you, honey, for being such a blessing to me and our family. Mama, happy, 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 happy days. Good always happens with Gino. The family's always happy with Gino. The times we have here, good moments we share. Gino truly cares. What's my This is not my indomie. Please, sir, it's not indomie. Don't call it indomie. Sir, the taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy admission. So very delicious indomie. Season's greatest from indomie. Indomie. Tasty nutrition, good for you. 
Your perfect family is under threat by germs. Infectious diseases are now the world's biggest killer of adults and children. Every day, 16,000 children under the ages of 5 and thousands of adults die from infectious diseases. These infectious diseases are caused by germs. They are everywhere. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily. In unclean water, dirty surfaces, in the toilet, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes, germs can cause deadly diseases like typhoid, diarrhea, flu, and cough. To protect your family from germs, use the power of Dettles One Cap Full for surface cleaning in your bathing water, in your laundry water, for first aid, to protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be Dettles Sure, endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Slavery is an evil practice abolished all over the world over 200 years ago. But today, human traffickers are selling human beings as slaves in Africa. It is your responsibility to make sure that you and the people you know do not fall into slavery. Don't believe fake promises of jobs abroad. People went to say Libya, Italy. Italy no use you when they carry me on top water. Four days now they lock me for inside house. No food, no water. I nearly die. Now God, when me heaven and earth, now save me. If you get one letter for Nigeria, you get junior one. You say you no get papa, you no get mama. Now make you come out. I beg go. God they do farm work. You better pass best when enter road. Don't accept to travel to Europe through the Sahara Desert. You may be walking into slavery. Don't be a slave. This is a public service announcement. Brought to you by NTA. You are welcome back to NTA Network News. The passage of the bill protecting the rights of persons with disability into law took center stage as Nigeria marks the International Day for Persons with Disability. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Persons Living with Disability, Dr. Samuel Anke, while addressing participants in Abuja, said, it is high time persons with disability across the country received due attention. We are great Nigerians. We are qualified to be anything in this country. So many of us are universities, professors, and when it comes to small appointments, they say, no, you are disabled. It's a lie. So we must wake up. You must become economically relevant. Other speakers, while urging members to allow love strive among them and continue to be agents of peace, advocated the need to integrate persons with disability in the workplaces to improve their livelihood. The convention is the right to access. In Nigeria here, if you are a person with disability, you will have to suffer before you board a bus. And then we ask ourselves, what will it cost the government to legislate on this issue. 
The United Nations declared every 3rd December as International Day for Persons with Disability, and this year has its theme, Transformation Towards Sustainable and Resilient Society for All. Now, to the National Assembly, where the Senate has passed several bills following clause-by-clause -clause consideration of some House bills for con concurrence, National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adeguloye also reports on the passage through second reading of a bill for an act to establish the Federal Polytechnic in Nugu State. The House bills for concurrence include the Courts and Tribunals, Fines and Financial Penalties Bill 2017, the Medical Residency Training Bill and the Vigilante Group of Nigeria Establishment Bill 2017. Deputy Senate President E.K. Ikwiramadu sponsored the bill for an act to establish the Federal Polytechnic, Mpu Enugu State. Declaring call for diversification should not only be limited to the economy, but be extended to one of the major drivers of our economy, which is education. Executive communications from President Muhammadu Buhari on the confirmation of nominations of resident electoral commissioners for the Independent National Electoral Commission and nomination of Ibrahim Rufai Imam as Grand Caddy of Sharia Court of Appeal, FCT, were referred to the relevant committees for further legislative action. An update was given on the investigation into the arrest of the chairman of Innocent Motors, Innocent Chukuma. We're able to, the committee met with uh, Mr. Magu, but the most important thing is that uh, after the deliberating with him, I'll ask him that he has to uh, ensure that uh, Mr. Chuk Innocent Chukuma yeah, uh, was released immediately. A minute silence was observed in honor of former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Al Haji Gidado Idris, who passed away on the 16th of December. Meanwhile, Senate President Bukola Saraki has granted audience to a delegation led by Mr. Ghani Adams and the Director General of the National Agency for Food, Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC. Give you all the support that is required because NAVDAC is important for us and for the country and for all of us. Plenary is adjourned till 16th of January 2018. From the National Assembly, Dennis at Digon Luye, NT News. And a bill seeking to establish the Nigerian Search and Rescue Service has been passed by the House of Representatives. The legislators also passed four bills for second reading. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunku has details of some of the bills. Some of the bills that were passed for second reading include the Bill for an Act to Amend the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act to mandate banks and other financial institutions to state in writing all charges and fees accruing to any transactions in the bank sponsored by Representative Jones Onyerere and two other members. If you take a cursory look at the existing provisions of the Act, you will realize, Mr. Speaker, that the punitive measures are not anything to write home about. The Bills for an Act to establish Federal Polytechnic in Delta State, sponsored by Representative Daniel Ruyeneju, and that seeking to also establish Federal College of Education in Akwete in Abia State, moved by Representative Uzoman Kem Abonta. The issue of drug abuse featured on the floor as Representative Abdul Samad Dasuki from Sokoto State moved that the government ban the sale of drugs containing codeine over the counter while the motion on the need to include in the 2018 budget funds for the takeoff of the Northeast Development Commission and the Nigerian in Diaspora Commission moved by Representative Istifanus Gang from Plateau State were adopted. That over 3 million bottles of codeine syrup are consumed daily in Kano and Jigawa states alone. We should ban this two from entering the country. To mandate the Committee on Appropriation to ensure that adequate pro budgetary provisions are met in the 2018 appropriation bill. Because it is the last legislative day for the year, members seized the opportunity to congratulate Speaker Yakubu Dogara, who will be clocking 50 on the 26th of this month. Speaker Dogara represents one of our very best. And it is good to be 50 in the style that you have to attend your own 50 as the Speaker of the House of Representatives of Nigeria. You have been able to glue this house together. Democratically elected speaker. A member from Edo State, Johnson Abo Naiman, defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressives Congress, APC, citing faction in PDP as his reason. The House has adjourned till 9th of January 2018 for the Christmas and New Year break, but plenary resumes on the 16th of January 2018.
from the National Assembly, Ignatius Sunko, NTN. Now, let's turn our attention to politics now because the All Progressives Congress in Kogi West, Senatorial District of Kogi State, has endorsed President Muhammad Buhari for the 2019 general election. The endorsement was at a political uh, rally in Kaba where the APC received new members into its fold. Solomon Adyedei has the story. All Progressive Congress, APC loyalists and supporters from the West Senatorial District of Kogi State thronged Kaba Township Stadium in demonstration of their support for President Muhammad Buhari. Speakers at the rally lamented the effects of decades of bad leadership which they maintained have affected every facet of the nation's economy and commended the efforts of President Muhammad Buhari at restoring hope to Nigerians. They rallied support for the President as he was endorsed a second term in office come 2019. Those who are in support that the president and commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari, to run for a second term, a second term I mean, uh, approved by this house, say aye. aye. Governor Yahaya Belu, while receiving some defectors into the All Progressive Congress, APC, described President Muhammad Buhari as God sent. Our PVC will talk. The new entrants promised to work for the success of the party, both at the state and national level. In Kabakogi State, Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. The bane of Nigeria's development in the past years has been lack of patriotic and exemplary leadership. These views were expressed by guests on NTA's current affairs program, Moment for Thought. The missing formula was to get the right leadership and that will drive all of the people, our creative energies, and move the country in a way that is forward. The rent economy we have been practicing for the past half a century mm. has mm -hmm. made us to be uh, too relaxed, as if we have nothing to contribute. Everybody looks up to the government. Moment for Thought comes up tonight at 11.39 on NTA Network Service. In the meantime, Senator representing Yobe Central and Chairman, Senate Committee on Climate Change, Bukhara Ibrahim, says President Muhammad Buhari is the best presidential material Nigeria will have in recent times. He stated this when he hosted the leadership of the Buhari Friends Organization. Abdullahi Garabar Brennan Kudu reports. The Buhari Friends Organization was in Senator Bukhar Abbas' office to formally decorate him as one of their patrons. The senator says he is proud to be associated with anything about President Muhammad Buhari for his pedigree and qualities of leadership in both his military and political career. He says for them from the Northeast, they have no any option apart from the president in 2019. I had the goodwill. I had the goodwill because of his personal qualities, integrity, public relations without money. Humility of the best order, service to the nation of the highest quality. He was a president of the military, the general, for two good years. We were following everything. He was a governor in my zone. The National Coordinator for Harry Friends Organization, Mr. Atanashi Sukho, says the organization is a non political group sensitizing Nigerians on the policies and achievements of the president. In Abuja, Abdullahi Garba Brunukudu, NTA News. Talking security now, the federal government has again reiterated its commitment to the military in ensuring that welfare of personnel is sustained. Minister of Defense Mansur Dan Ali, while inaugurating blocks of flats constructed by the defense headquarters, noted that it will boost the morale of officers and soldiers as they carry out their constitutional responsibilities. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports. The 260 units of three- and two-bedroom flats is to help in decongesting the overpopulated Mambila Barracks and Mogadishu Cantonment in Abuja. 
Both the Minister of Defence and the Chief of Defence Staff expressed optimism that a decent accommodation such as this will enhance productivity as well as address inadequate accommodation challenges faced by seven military personnel within the Federal Capital Territory. This opportunity call on officers and men of the armed forces of Nigeria to rise to the challenges of collective action for national unity and security of our nation. We must not rest upon our house. Remember to whom much is given, much is expected. I wish to retreat that this is the force of its kind in the Nigerian armed forces and underscores our commitment towards aligning the residential facility comes with it, closed circuit television cameras and free internet services. In Abuja, Isaac Unkuma, NTA News. The State House Ministerial Servicum Unit has established a help desk where staff, visitors and contractors can make inquiries on payments, correspondence, medical services and other public service related issues. The help desk, which will be manned by well-trained staff who will effectively handle the inquiries, will in the interim focus on six areas including file tracking, ICT related services, maintenance and stores. A statement by the Deputy Director Information, Atta Issa, says the establishment of the help desk comes in the wake of renewed vigor of the Buhari administration to promote excellence in government, business and services. Participants at a public hearing on the operations of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad of the Nigeria Police have opted for the restructuring of the squad. This was the conclusion at the public hearing organized by the National Human Rights Commission in Abuja. Ado Adamo completes the report. The national base of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad of the Nigerian Police has continued to dominate public discourse as the squad is facing intense public scrutiny. While some people are calling for the total scrapping of the unit due to the numerous complaints against it, others are standing with the police force, emphasizing that restructuring is the solution. The National Human Rights Commission has also added its voice to the need for the public to assist government to reorganize the squad to make it more effective in tackling crimes while mainstreaming human rights into its operations. The commission was strategizing on engaging the Nigerian police force on the activities of SARS. The IGP's pronouncement is therefore a welcome coincidence with scheduling of today's event. Key players in the justice system at the public hearing stressed the need for an inclusive approach to reposition the unit. Calling for scrapping off of a SARS is not the best approach. But if there is a forum for us to judge up like this, then there will be no need for war war. Criminals, they only succeeded in committing crime when you do away with the, with the, with the, with the, with the security agencies. The public hearing also entertained seven different cases of alleged human rights violations against the special anti-robbery squad. In Abuja, Ado Adamualso, NTA News. The Director Monitoring Department of the National Human Rights Commission, Tony Ojuku, had earlier spoken to my colleague, Shegun Laole, on the issues raised at the public hearing. The public hearing is like an X-ray of complaints leveled against us before the commission. And in the course of the public hearing, the challenges being faced by SARS that makes them not to keep to the constitutional provisions of human rights and international uh, human rights standards are also brought into focus. Now, after the public hearing, the commission will now embark on capacity building that will now help the SARS officers know how they are supposed to carry their duties in line with the constitution and international human rights standards. For instance, we emphasize mainstreaming of human rights into the operations of SARS, and that means that their work will be carried out through intelligence gathering, first of all. As you know, what happens now is that once there's any complaint against any Nigerian, the person is arrested even before the investigation starts. That is happening because there is no intelligence gathering. 
Tony Ojukuda speaking to my colleague a little earlier. Now let's cross over to uh, Jennifer, who is in Lagos Network Center. Uh, she leads us on clinical trials to boost healthcare delivery and other reports. Jennifer. Thank you, Joseph. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Nigeria is on the way to employing clinical trials and research findings to addressing endemic commu communication and non-communicable diseases in the country. The Director General, Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, Professor Babatunde Salako, who made this known in Lagos, said a 15-month research advisory board has been set up to drive the initiative. Abola de Salami completes the report. Inaugurating the 15-month research advisory board made up of medical practitioners, the Director General of the Institute of Medical Research, Professor Salako, says the research board will help provide mutual aid between researchers and policymakers towards addressing national concern about scientific inquiry. On conducting research into health problems with a view to controlling the diseases, he stressed that the board will assist to develop human and, and infrastructure capacities for clinical and biomedical research in collaboration with medical schools. Naima was one of the institutions that carried out uh, clinical trials on um, um, mal anti-malaria agents uh, to show that the anti-malaria is useful, effective and safe. To reposition the Medical Institute to an institution of excellence in basic applied and operational research for the promotion of national health, members of the research board said Critical analysis will be conducted to determine the challenges militating against the development of research in the country. I know that um, generally uh, some key things in the health sector are not appropriately funded, but everybody gets involved. It's just to show the policy maker the essence of research. The Nigerian Medical Research Institute is an institution whose primary function is to conduct research and provide solutions to medical issues. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. As part of efforts to address inadequate office accommodation, with a view to enhancing its operations, the National Union of Road Transport Workers has commissioned an ultra-modern secretariat in Lagos. The national president, NURTW, Najim Yassim, said the NLC would said. Let me take that again. As part of efforts to address inadequate office accommodation with a view to enhancing its operation, the National Union of Road Transport Workers has commissioned an ultra-modern secretariat in Lagos. The national president, NURTW, Najim Yassim, and the NLC president witnessed the event, which also attracted dignitaries from various parts of the country. President, Nigeria Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba said, the commissioning of the NURTW Secretariat underscores the need for the union to remain relevant in national development, especially in the transport sector of the economy. I want to once again call on all our elites and all them to continue to partner with road transport workers in areas of progress and development. National President, NURTW, Najim Yassin, stressed, that the ultramodern secretariat is born out of mutual understanding between the Lagos State government and the union when it became necessary to pull down the old structure to accommodate the construction of a flyover in Abuliegba. We thank the state government for the assistance I've been rendering for our union. And secondly, we call on the state government to collaborate with our members in respect of the transport policy in Lagos State. We have to sacrifice our personal comfort to add to the existing blocks and the necessary, the necessary rules. The event also presented a platform for the Speaker Lagos House of Assembly, Mudashi Obasa, to shed more light on the role of NYRTW and the new Lagos State Transport Policy. We are going to accommodate what we call PPP, a kind of partnership, so they can be the bus owners. I know in having some of the buses, they will be part of the system and they will continue to be in assistance. There were good messages from the Lagos State Police Command and dignitaries present at the event. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. You are still on to NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay tuned.
unfair advantage that puts you in front of everyone else. Be the first to have an immersive movie experience. 1,000 Naira equals 4 gigabyte. That's 60 hours of video content. With the power to broadcast yourself, the world is your stage. 2,500 Naira equals 12.5 gigabytes that lets you upload 200 hours of dance video. Join the data revolution, get the unfair advantage, powered by Glow Data Unmatched, and enjoy fast internet like never before. Dow Star 777 Hash, the largest data network. Glow, Grandmasters of Day. His Royal Majesty, Igwe Dr. Robert C. Eze, Okofia the Sixth, Ezu Ukpodunu Kofia, heartily invite all sons and daughters of Ukpodunu Kofia, Ndichi Ukpo, Ndieze, and all indigenous of Dunu Kofia clan, executive and members of Ukpo Improvement Union, Ohaneze Anambra, Ndi Bonine, and all Nigerians, well wishers to the 26th of Hala celebration of Ezu Bodunu Kofia Igwe Dr. Robert C. Eze, holding on Saturday, 23rd December 2017, at Ukbodunu Kofia Royal Palace, commencing at 12 noon prompt. The Ofala celebration will be preceded, as usual, by a purification service on Friday, 22nd December 2017, beginning at 6 o'clock in the evening. This year's Ofala will feature the regulars such as Masquerade, Igweze Dance by the Royal Father, paying of homage to the Igwe by his subjects, Community Service Award and Conferment of Chieftaincy Titles, Announcer, Prince Engineer Ato Eze, Chairman Oranto Petroleum International, the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, announces the commencement of sale of forms for the 2018 ASCON Public Service Examination, PSE. The Public Service Examination is open to the following organizations. Federal Ministries, Parastatus and Agencies. State Ministries and Parastatus and Agencies. State Civil Service Commissions in the Federation local government service commissions and other interested public institutions for further inquiries please contact ac nwankwo course registrar announcer director general ascon the national agency for food and drug administration and control navdac is working to ensure access to safe good quality essential medicines with the world health organization pre-qualification of made in nigeria pharmaceutical products stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of navdac laws national regional and international collaborations cutting edge technologies including the mobile authentication service for the last 24 years navdac has made steady progress in ensuring that the health of the nation is protected. Our collective responsibility is eliminating substandard, falsified and unsafe drugs, medical devices, foods and water. I urge all Nigerians to support NAVDAC in safeguarding our health. God bless Nigeria. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. It's that time of the year when we appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses, and above all, you, our esteemed viewers. Together, we made 2017 great. Together, we shall make 2018 even greater. That's why we say thank you, Merry Christmas, and a prosperous New Year. This is NTN Network News. Let's talk business now. Average price of petrol in state in Nigeria decreases by 0.3% month on month in November, while retail pump price is still pegged at 175 naira per litre. Here is Muplang Dakok with this and more on business news. <laughs> Hello there, thank you for joining us. The National Bureau of Statistics has released its latest report for Premium Motor Spirits, PMS, also known as Petrol.
The report shows the average monthly price for petrol paid across the country in November averaged 145.6 Naira per liter for the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT. This is below the fixed upper price limit for the retail pump price of 145 Naira per liter by the authorities. Bielsa State recorded the highest price of 150.5 Naira per liter, while Plato State recorded the lowest at 143.6 Naira per liter. The Debt Management Office DMO has listed the $300 million diaspora bond and the $3 billion euro bonds on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, NSE. Listing the two bonds on the NSE will help increase the number and range of securities available on the domestic capital market. And before we go, here's a look at how the equities market fared Thursday. package. I am Muplang Dakok. Thanks, Muplang. Ogun State Government is to partner the federal government and the private sector to actualize their vision of developing Nigerian economy. Governor Ibukunle Amosun stated these at the launch of Metro's of Father Rice in Abeokuta, Ogun State. The Kong Agbonde has details. Call it food revolution in Ogun State. You will not be far from the truth. Definitely is a huge response to the clarion call for the development of homegrown economy, exploring the value chains in agriculture. Importation and overdependence on oil are said to be major bane of Nigeria's economy. The administration of President Muhammadu Buhari since inception has not relented in the determination to make agriculture the mainstay of the economy. Metros of other rice cultivated, made, and packaged in Ogun State is pivotal in the response to the federal government. Governor Musu noted that the state is not only the industrial hub but also moved the agricultural wheel of the nation. We are also committed to ensuring that we are able to feed our people and by extension consolidate our position as a foremost agricultural hub in the West African Southern region. Chairman Presidential Tax Force on Agriculture and Governor of KB State Abubakar Bagudu and the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria Godwin Emefili endorsed the project. President Mohamed Ubuhai, assisted by the Vice President, Professor Yulio Sibaidu, and the Central Bank of Nigeria took steps to ensure that we begin to fund the real sector so that we can achieve for ourselves those things where we are competitive. And I'm happy to be here today to be witnessing this giant strike demonstrated by the right pyramid that is right here behind me. The multi-million Naira metro rice maize are in the three senatorial districts of the state. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agbode, NT News. Don't go away because we have sports news after these messages. Pep Guardiola's elite Man City sits comfortably at the top of the table. Can Eddie House Bournemouth cause an upset as they play for pride against the citizens? The world's most wanted league, Manchester City versus Bournemouth. Saturday, 23 December on Quesair Free Sports for the fan. The time has come for Nigeria to take her rightful place in world sports with the first national grassroots sports festival to discover and prepare sport talents and develop future world champions for Nigeria. The festival date is 3rd to 10th March 2018. The venue is the National Stadium Abuja, packages A and B. This is the opportunity for you to promote your brand through the festival. For broadcast sponsorship, which include live broadcasts, highlight shows, and TV fans show, contact the chairman, chief coordinator, Angelo Peter I. Elosia, or Nick Oyishi.
organizers, Grassroots International Sports Academy and LOP Worldwide Television, endorsed by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. Broadcast partner, NTA. Thank you. And just before sports, let's get the very latest on the foreign scene. Hello and welcome to this segment of the news. United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Roberto Mignon, says between 5,000 and 10,000 refugees would be evacuated to European countries and Canada by the end of January 2018. Libyan authorities have come under fire over migrant abuses since the CNN airing of footage on slave markets in the North African country last month. Libya has long been a transit hub for migrants seeking a better life in Europe, but human traffickers have stepped up their lucrative business in the chaos since the 2011 revolution. The new leader of South African governing African National Congress, ANC Cyril Ramaphosa, has pledged to fight corruption and pursue a policy of radical economic transformation. He told delegates at the end of the party's five days conference that tackling unemployment and poverty should also be key party policies. Mr. Ramaphosa was elected on Monday to succeed President Jacob Zuma as party leader. Local Nigeria's Super Eagles drop one sport in the latest FIFA ranking as the race to win $50,000 get hot in the ongoing West Africa Golf Tour Championship in Abuja. Tamara Ebiwe is here with details on our sports update. Super Eagles are now ranked 51st in the FIFA ranking released on Thursday.